back in 1994, Dublin football was in a strange place. They had all the ingredients of an All-Ireland winning team with the likes of Charlie Redmond, Paul Clark, and Keith Barr to name a few. And when they entered that year's All-Ireland final, their second in three years, the confidence was there that they could end an 11 year wait for the Sam Maguire Trophy. But instead it was heartbreak for the Dubs who lost by two points to down and would have to wait at least another year for a shot at an All-Ireland title. However in 1994 there would be a shining light amongst the heartbreak and that will be the emergence of 18 year old Jason Sherlock. The story of Jason Sherlock is more than that just of a football story as it was the story of a GEA superstar. So much so that it would lead the GEA to reevaluate its marketing strategy around Gaelic games and will be one of the reasons for the GEA restructuring the resources allocated to Dublin in order to capitalise on the potential buzz that one GEA player could create. However, going into detail on the plan to revamp Dublin GEA in the early 2000s is a story for another day. But there is no doubt the hype around Jason Sherlock had an impact on some of the decisions they would make. But instead we turn our focus to the rise of one of the great legends of Gaelic games, looking at good times, the hardships, the rise and the fall of Jason Sherlock, or J.O. as he would be sung on the hill. Jason, who grew up in Finglas but hails from a Chinese background, would star in the 1994 Leinster Minor Final against Wexford, scoring both goals and giving a man of the match performance, catching the eye of Dublin's senior management team. And from then in 95, that was how Jason became an overnight sensation for Dublin, capturing the imagination of the fans not just in Dublin but across the country. He would play a significant role in ending the 12 year wait for All Ireland success in Dublin, scoring significant goals against the likes of Leash, Mead and Cork along the way. And in the final against Tyrone, he contributed massively to the goal, toe poking it past the keeper in a 50-50 ball, allowing Charlie Redmond to follow it up and score for Dublin. And when Dublin won the All Ireland, what would follow for Jason that summer would be a level of fame beyond his expectation. Something that in his documentary he said would change him forever and often feels he wish it never happened. And in many ways you can understand that from his point of view as Jason was just 19 with the whole world seemingly in front of him. He could play basketball, soccer, hurling, Gaelic football and probably could have made it at some level in them sports as well. Sherlock was a talented soccer player with UCD and would eventually earn a move to Shamrock Rovers after a talented season in both 94 and 95. His talent even caught the eye of Liverpool Football Club and their manager Roy Evans in which Jason admitted a trial to play for the club was on the cards before the summer of 95. But when the 95 All-Ireland success happened, Jason was shot into superstardom and there was no turning back as he became not only a massive star in the GEA but also a superstar in Irish culture that would appear on TV shows, radio interviews and be on the front of various newspapers and magazines. And as Pat Spillane put it best on the Sunday game, he said the GEA have a serious marketable commodity in young Jason Sherlock. And in many ways he was right. When you look at all other sports for example, each sport always has their own brandable superstar or icon. And when you speak to anyone on the planet, they will know them even if they don't follow the sport, whether it is basketball, soccer, American football or rugby to name a few. And I think the GEA and Jason both understood the potential of what was about to happen. And I think who was ever behind the scenes influencing Jason to be part of all these sponsorship deals and TV show appearances believed that Jason could be that of the GEA. He could be someone to transcend the sport and potentially grow it abroad and dare to dream, bring it to mainstream culture. And in fact, many people even forget that there were even some talks of the sport going professional in the late 90s and there is no doubt that the rise of J.O. had an impact on that. But, in all honesty, the summer of 95 was probably as good as it got for J.O. in his playing career as in the late 90s he had too many commitments, representing Ireland in basketball, playing for UCD in soccer and later Shamrock Rovers and then you had his GEA commitments. Pressure of it all probably weighed all too much and to be honest he probably would never quite reach the level of 95 again. Of course the responsibility of that can't all be put on J.O. though. Let's not forget Dublin won just two Leinster titles between 95 and 2005 and were in a very bad place in Gaelic football in terms of the level they were at. And despite contributing with the odd important goal or star performance, he looked like he'd lost that turn of pace or quick bit of skill that he had back in the 90s or early 2000s. But I think you have to praise J.O. for his commitment to Dublin football and Gaelic football in general. When he dropped all his other commitments for Dublin, there was nothing he wouldn't do to try and help Dublin be as successful as he could. 
He was a leader, a warrior on the pitch, and gave 100% each time he took to the field. And as a Dublin fan growing up myself, there was no player that any Dublin fan wanted to be more than Jason Sherlock. He was the name on the back of every kid's jersey, he was the name every Dublin fan looked for first in the matchday program, and J.O. was the player that everyone sang and talked about on the hill. Maybe he didn't have the star of the career on the pitch that won multiple All-Irelands or All-Stars and National Leagues for example, but the impact he had on promoting the sport in Dublin and various communities meant he is a legend, not just for that 95 season, but also for what he's done off the pitch. And I think his story has a wide impact on how successful Dublin are today. Of course he is a part of Dublin's management team that won 5 All-Irelands in a row, so I'm sure his leadership qualities stood out then. But I think more importantly he was a role model for the people of Dublin and he has a wide impact in increasing the amount of young Dubliners who picked up Gaelic football ahead of other sports in the early 2000s or late 90s for example. So to summarise when we look back at Jao's career, the summer of 95 probably is that of a fairy tale and yes he probably didn't live up to expectation post 95 in terms of leading Dublin to multiple All-Irelands or being the star player in the majority of matches he played in. But instead he was an icon in promoting the sport and proving that no matter where you're from or who you are or what your background is, you can become one of the top players in the GEA. What's up everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you haven't already of course. Share this out to your friends and family and yeah lads, of course Jason Sherlock was a childhood idol growing up so undoubtedly at some point I was going to make a video about him and about his story. And yeah lads, hopefully I covered it pretty well. Do let me know down in the comments below what you thought or anything in relation to Jason Sherlock and his rise through Dublin. Any videos you lads want me to make, do let me know down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to take some suggestions. But anyway lads, my name is Aaron and I will catch you all soon. Have a lovely week and speak to you soon.